Welcome to the Eduonix Apache Spark course. Let's just take a moment to introduce the course. This is the Spark course syllabus, and it's a very simple syllabus in that it just outlines the key components and concepts that each unit of the course will cover. You can find this syllabus document in the documentation folder. In Unit 1, we begin by looking at the many types of applications you can create with Apache Spark at a high level. For example, clustering applications, and here, clustering does not refer to clustered computers, rather clustering refers to an algorithm in data science. Spark's other components for machine learning and visualization in GraphX also relate strongly to data science. Spark is primarily the tool that would be employed by a data scientist or some commercial or business intelligence analyst. Spark allows the processing of big data. In Hadoop, we are restricted to algorithms that match well to a MapReduce framework. Spark breaks out of the traditional clustered MapReduce framework and allows us to use a Hadoop cluster for many high-level data science and business intelligence analytical operations. Then, we move to look at the runtime modes of Spark, Standalone, Yarn, and Mesos. We set up a simple three-node pseudo-cluster that's the Hortonworks virtual machine, and we start to look at Spark's Scala API and how we can run Apache Spark on our Hortonworks virtual machine. In Unit 2, we look at what you need to be able to build and run Spark applications. You need to be able to understand its runtime modes, particularly Standalone and Yarn. The relationship between Spark and Yarn a high-level conceptual understanding of what a Spark context is, and, of course, how to configure Apache Spark. From Unit 3 onwards, we are actually writing Spark applications in code. So we write a GraphX visualization application, we write a k-means clustering application for machine learning, we create some SQL queries, and we look at the Spark Hive interface, and for streaming, we create a Twitter processing application that connects to Twitter and starts to process tweets from Twitter via a Spark discretized stream or DStream. In this practical exploration of Spark applications, we develop a good conceptual understanding of what a resilient distributed dataset is in Spark. We learn how we can submit these applications to a YARN cluster with a Spark driver, and we learn how to use the build tools Maven and Gradle to create Spark applications. One of the really good things about Spark is its streaming API and the ability to handle real-time streaming data inside a Hadoop cluster with a HDFS file system, and we look at how the need for these types of applications will increase exponentially, driven by what is known as the Internet of Things, and the rapid exponential increase of streaming data via the Internet. So we go through all the definitions of streaming data, that's real-time data, data input-output, high-performance clusters, fault tolerance, there's a language of real-time or streaming data, and we look at those definitions. Then we look at a high-level conceptual understanding of a design pattern for streaming applications that's considered to be best practice and is used and was developed at Twitter. We look at a conceptual level, the components of the Spark streaming API as it applies to the Lambda architecture. Then, we move on to create a Twitter stream processor application in Spark that connects to Twitter, 
and spins up nodes with work threads that create many concurrent streams to Twitter. And we look at how these streams are aggregated into a resilient data set. And we look at a high level conceptual understanding of discretized streams using Spark to expose the fundamental workings of these streams. Now, let's move on to the course.